Hello everyone, thank you all for joining me today to talk about the major impacts COVID-19 had on people's lives. Today we will be focusing solely on the suffering that small businesses had to experience during the pandemic. COVID-19 was extremely difficult for everyone, not just small business owners. This virus has taken so much from a lot of people, things greater than just financial stability. We'll begin this interview with a couple questions that have been put together for me. First question, let's start trying to wrap our head around this whole thing. Just how many small business business owners are actually suffering because of the pandemic? Okay, well, there are two prestigious universities that collaborated together to take some samples and put together some real data on how COVID-19 affected the entrepreneurship world. The University of Illinois and Harvard University schools of business and economic conducted a survey with 5,800 different small businesses from across the whole country. 41.3% of small businesses in their survey had to temporarily close because of COVID-19 complications. A far smaller number, though, only 1.8% of them had to close permanently. Not shying away from the fact that the majority of small business owners use their businesses to pay their bills. If almost half of the small business owners cannot pay their bills, that is a catastrophic issue. Wow, okay. What about the other 60% of small businesses that didn't have to close? How were they able to escape closing their business through the pandemic? Actually, the government helped small businesses a lot during the pandemic with different programs you could apply for. There are multiple different programs or loans that the government would let small businesses apply for to try to save them from financial ruin. Like the PPP or the EIDL, PPP meaning Payment Protection Program, or EIDL meaning Economic Injury or Disaster Loan. A poll was taken with small business owners and they reported that almost 75% of them required government assistance through the pandemic and minority owned small businesses, 81% of them needed assistance. Okay, so what are the problems that these businesses are actually facing? Well, there are a number of different issues they're running into. First, it's limiting the number of customers they can serve, especially in retail. Since everyone wants to stay home and is worried about catching the virus, people are not just going to leave the comfortability of their homes unless they absolutely need something. Like if you have a small business that isn't really like a 100% need in someone's life, like you're just kind of like a clothing brand or something that that's not really a need, but like people like, it's like a a leisure purpose, like leisure purpose brands, they're actually seeing the biggest trouble because people don't want to leave their homes to try to just get a leisure and what they only want to leave their homes for things they actually need. The second is the transition to going digital. Digital is the future because you can just go online and buy things that you need instead of having to go in person and risk your life like these old people are trying to go in person and risk their lives to try to get these needs instead of just going digital and they can just buy them online and have them right at their doorstep. During the pandemic, people are creating better alternatives for shopping, and some businesses may not have the capital to do so during the pandemic because all these different financial hardships that they're going through, it's hard for these companies to try to go digital because that's going to take money. Not everything, not anything's free in life. Okay, last one. What makes a small, what makes a business a small business? Out of all the businesses in the U.S., how many are considered small businesses? Well, small businesses aren't necessarily small. That's kind of just a title that they've kind of carried on through the years because of how big these corporations actually are compared to like the average business. They just do not have the sheer number of employees or total annual revenue that large corporations do. To be considered a business, you must have, to be considered a small business, you must have under 500 employees and make under $7.5 million in annual revenue. Over, over 99% of businesses are considered small businesses because of how high the small business classifications are set. That's all I got for you today. Okay, thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed my time here. Have a great day. God bless.